Good afternoon. Um, welcome to the Land Development Code Text Amendment Public Outreach Meeting. Um, today we're going to be looking at uh, one uh, text amendment, uh, 23913. Uh, the next meeting scheduled for this item would be the Planning Commission Consistency Finding Meeting. That would be on October 9th, uh, 2 p.m. That will follow uh, with the uh, first Board of County Commissioners public hearing uh, on October 19th. Um, then the adoption hearing, which is the second public hearing, would be on November 2nd. Um, today we're going to be presenting one item, item 230913. This is the Farm Worker Housing Standards. This amendment will modify the standard for farm worker housing sites, and the intent is to promote the efficient development of farm worker housing and predictability in the development process. Um, staff from Development Services, in cooperation with the Hillsborough County Agriculture Economic Development Council (AADC), is proposing these modifications and clarifications. And this is specifically for Section 611.39. These are the following standards that we are going to be presenting to uh, modify uh, as part of this text proposal. First one is the screening and landscaping. Today, screening is required where the farm worker housing is located 200 feet from zoning lot, line adjacent to parcels under different ownership that are residentially developed. This new uh, amendment will add that the screening will be required if residential structures on properties under different ownership are present within 300 feet of the farm worker housing structure or improvements. Sidewalks as well uh, are being uh, proposed to be modified. Let me take that out of the way. This will not be required when the farm worker housing is located in rural areas. Also, internal sidewalk may be adjacent to parking areas or along internal driveways or, or access. And these uh, sidewalks will consist of packed shell, gravel, or similar materials that allow for accessibility. They will still be subject to the American with Disability Act or ADA compliance. The next uh, standard being proposed to be amended is the parking requirements. Uh, these projects will provide one parking space per unit. And these spaces shall be will be permitted to be located individually or aggregated in a in a consolidated area of the site. And again, surface material may be packed shell, shell, uh, gravel, or similar materials. There will be one accessible space that needs to be provided for the project. And this one again will have to comply with ADA standards. If there are dormitories being proposed. The parking requirements will be determined by the zoning administrator on a case by case. Um, application. The next standard being modified is the uh, stormwater management. Uh, the amendment will. Will state that if the farm worker housing project is located within a farm. All of the farm area or acreage would be allowed to be utilized for the drainage or stormwater calculations requirements. Also, landscaping and parking lot lighting will not be required, and this is consistent with other code requirements today. County right of ways or access improvements will not be required for these projects. Uh, however, all applicable access improvements required for emergency response access will still be um, required as site development. The other changes uh, as part of this text amendment is project occupancy. Um, the occupancy limits for these projects uh, would be regulated by the health department, migrant labor camp, or residential migrant housing permit standards. And this is in accordance with the uh, Florida chapter 64E.14. The other standard being uh, proposed to be uh, clarified is the site the permit review process, site development plan reviews would be permitted to be filed concurrently with the conditional use application reviews. And, 
And this is something that an applicant could do today. We just want to make it clear as part of this amendment that you could, that the uh, applicant could file them concurrently at the same time. Um, this text amendment was uh, directed by the Board of County Commissioners, and that completes the presentation, and we're open for questions or comments. Israel, uh, Chris McNeil, is it is mm -hmm. now would be a time to ask about other possible revisions? Yes, you, yes, we we are taking all public input today, so we can you know evaluate and then uh, uh, you know consider those. Okay. Um, so I do have I do have a few questions or suggestions. Uh, should I go ahead and and start? Yeah. Yeah. Go okay. Ahead. Um, so. I don't think I heard anything about the uh, locational, uh, excuse me, not locational, but item C about the number of residents equaling one, one unit. No, that hasn't that standard. Uh, you're talking about uh, subsection C of the um, text, right? Yes, sir. Where it talks about dormitories yeah. for purpose of density mm -hmm. calculation shall be calculated at. And that's at 3.75, which is, which is really less than. Than the 5 that we use for other, uh, mobile home, I think units and. And really, uh, for this type might even be again, you referenced the FAC 64. Section, which is, you know, 50 square feet per. Person, a force place, and maybe just as a suggestion, it might 10 residents for 1 unit might be a better suggestion. Okay. So you're saying that you're just basically sharing or proposing that a 10 residents could equal a unit. Yes, sir. Okay. And I'm using the FAC to kind of, uh, to get there, uh, you know, just in a, looking at a, a trailer, uh, square footage relative to what's allowed per the FAC, which you're, you're referencing down later that you, um, that you mm -hmm. talked about. Uh, Chris, could I just uh, add on to that just for a second? Yes, sir. Yeah, so um, this goes back to, you know, the comment I had that, you know, for a single wide mobile home based on the Department of Health standards, you could have, you know, the it all depends on the calculations, but it could be at least seven people in a, sing, in a single wide mobile home, if not eight or nine. So that's kind of where the justification is. I think that Chris is coming up with that, you know, at least to increase it potentially up to 10. I mean, depending on the uh, square footage of the mobile home, you could easily have 10 in a uh, probably a 2000 square foot mobile home with, or 1600 square foot mobile home without a problem. So that's where that's coming from. Second thought Thank you. on, is there any, should I move on? Yep. Okay. Um, the, uh, I have actually, I don't know, can I share my screen Israel? Is it possible to do that? Seems like this might be a little like a informal where I might be able to do that. Do you want to look at the, the text or something else? Well, I have a, I, yes, sir. Yeah, I have okay. a, um. Or you want to share like a something else? It's the text that I had a kind of a red mark of the text. Oh, I see. Uh, I believe you could. Let me see. I may be You'll just be able to share. Let me stop mine. Okay. Now you can go ahead and try okay. to share yours. The you see that? Okay. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, so that was, um, let's see, I lost my, there it is. So that was the 10. This one uh, here, the, uh, about the 50 foot front side and rear, this was, we had talked about a little bit the other day, notwithstanding internal project driveways um, that may be located in the, in the uh, adjacent to the public road. 
or to the property that is come uh, under common ownership with the farm worker housing site. This is one of the ones we had talked about. Just a suggestion there of when when you're bringing a road in and the uh, and like that flagpole portion of a lot, and that's the only way in and out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. That that might be a um, rather than it just be the for the access as a thought of, that it could be in any part of the required yard because. Part of that, as long as it's the access, not the actual drive that's, you know, that the uh, housing is off of, but the supporting access to it, um, it would be great if that could be in any part of the yard because that gets into pinch points coming in and going around, etc. Okay. And so that was uh, just a suggestion here of of that how that could be. Um, located in the required yard just for the access. The external sidewalk uh, located in rural areas, uh, internal sidewalks may be adjacent. This is my proposed suggestion, maybe just adjacent to parking areas along the internal driveways. Um, they are required, correct? Internal. Yeah, so the, the way, well, the way it is proposed, um, the external, external sidewalk will not be required if they are located in the rural area. Now, internal uh, are still required, although you can have it of a material that is not, that, that, that's gravel uh, packed shell or similar material, where you still have to provide for some sort of internal sidewalk. Okay, so so they they're required, um, and it says, it, "Am I understanding this right too?" That the sidewalk may consist of pack show gravel, or similar material, mm -hmm. and it be ADA compliant. Okay, so what that means, I believe, is that this that that material could be flush and part of the drive or expanded on the drive. Is that right? So the, if the drive is 20 feet wide, then if it's 25 or 26 feet wide, that would also serve as the path adjacent to the drive. Right. We 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 haven't we haven't discussed, and that, I think that's a topic for further discussion. Is how how we will if they will be the same, or if there will be some sort of delineation between both. So, but that that that's that's a that's in an item that we have for further discussions. Okay, so so that's so where that, that you bring that up. Yeah, could it be flush and continuous? Um, because if it is, that would be you know how you could get on an interpretation. If it is, then that gets into making sure that there's no other barrier or feature that has to be between those two to delineate them. Because sometimes the reviewers will like to ask if you're flush. If you have your pedestrian path flush with the drive aisle, that they want some sort of barrier like Ballard's to separate the two, which would not be the intent of where you were going with this. I think the idea here was just that it's a shared path. This uh, next one under eight was just kind of a carryover from item C above. At one per 10, if it's one per unit, not leave it up to the zoning administrator at a later date. Chris, you're speaking to for a, for a, for a uh, dormitory for that, right? That's correct. This last one, it's just says if dormitories are utilized, parking okay. requirements shall be. And rather okay, than see, determined okay. by the, the ZA, that. I would just say make it one per 10 if it's dorm, because that would be. This one, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So one per unit is what we're saying. Which falls in line with what this parking requirement is one, one per unit. Now I'm sure I have a question for, uh, 
based on the other standards for the mobile home parks. And Steve, I don't know if you may be able to answer this. I mean, this typically like a would a mobile home based on the requirements about square footage per person would that would that equate to the the you know potentially ten person per a mobile home? It depends on the size of the mobile home. Um, okay. You know the uh, because the square footage it's uh, you know fifty square feet for sleeping area per person, and then there's a uh, an amount for um, uh, living space, shared space. So mm -hmm. it, it's really kind of a sliding scale. I mean, I and I, but I think like a typical single wide mobile home, from what I've seen, is at least a, this is a small you know single wide mobile home is at least eight at least mm -hmm. people okay okay with the health code and it may be more chris i'm not you know i don't know specific sizes of mobile homes you may have right yeah so so like you said if if 50 a, a normal mobile home now might be you know 15 by 50 let's say uh which is 750 square feet and if you divided that by 50 it'd be at 15. Right, so, but there's also a set aside for the common space. I agree. That. So, yeah. that, do you know what that number is, Stephen? I know it's fifty. I, well, it's um, it's a, I think it's one hundred fifty for the first person, and then um, it it goes down from there. So uh, we could get the exact calculation, but I when I just did ball ballparked it, I, it was about eight eight people, eight you know, but potentially up to the what you described. I think that would be potentially ten people. I I can I can pull right. up. Yeah. yeah, I just I, think I was curious because yeah, trying to see if it's comparable comparable to the you know the one unit per you know the one parking per unit for 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 a mobile home versus yeah you know, one per ten for a dormitory is that comparable? Yeah, that's that was that was my question. It's okay, it it's know. it's comparable. Yeah, if, oh, yeah. I, yeah. Whatever we use for the dormitory per unit, we should probably be the same number. We if we change that, mm -hmm. hopefully we're going to change that at three point seven five to something else. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was. That's what where I was going with that, Brian. Just so you know, I was okay. backing into that from the trailer because mm -hmm. some okay. of the trailers that are built now they're just a little bit larger than the older ones, and that's why that they, they have some of them could have ten as opposed to the eight. The okay. older trailers were shorter. Um. So. Okay. okay. Uh, that was that, and then um. Um. This was just a, I mean, that's just a wording opinion. I just, you know, for what it's worth, this was just saying with all applicable uh, land development code regulations. I mean, that's just the land development code. Uh, site development plan review shall be permitted to be filed. And this was just, this was a suggestion because I think what the intent here is that that the conditional use be allowed to be proceeded simultaneous to the mm -hmm. site development. And what it says is shall be permitted uh, to be filed concurrently. It doesn't say anything that it could be processed or review, reviewed or proceed simultaneously. So I was trying to mm -hmm. uh, make sure that it's not used to say, well, yeah, you can file it, but we're not, we don't have to review it. You still have to have this approved. So somehow to clarify, they, they can be, and I don't know, um, Brian Israel, you know how that's like on most other conditional use or uses that require the conditional use. It's just done as part of the site review process. I don't know if this could be that, um, why does it have to have that extra level of scrutiny? Um, I don't know, but, but, uh, just a thought. If it could be that way, that would be obviously ideal. Sure. So if it's, if it is going, this is written, like, it's still a separate process, I believe. And if that is the intent that you still have a 1 sheet conditional use plan and the final construction plans, both coming in at the same time. I just think that this has to be clarified a little bit, a little bit more. Um, so that that was that and then I think that was. That's the end of my comments. Is there anything need uh, additional clarification or question? No, thank you. Those are good, 
good comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. All right, so um, if no more questions or comments, I believe that we have concluded the presentation and thank you for your time and, and, and the input. We're gonna uh, evaluate all these comments and, and there should be uh, some tweaks to the item in the next following days. Thank you guys, appreciate all you're doing. You're welcome. Right, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot for coming, Chris. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you for attending and y'all have a good night. All right, All right thanks. Thank you.